All right, everybody. Well, this is a live video from NG Hobbies, and uh, the reason of this, this video is to help you guys out setting up the tram after you received it. And the first setup unboxing. So this is from NG Hobbies. If you don't know me, but here there is NG Hobbies. So once you receive the tram. And I will post this video on YouTube as well if I can download it back onto my phone and uh, post it on YouTube as a tutorial. So you receive the tram and when you unbox it you have a few little bags inside. There is the uh, TNR board on it. This is the one which you will have to use in a race condition in order to uh, um, just one sec, let me unplug this one it's really hard <laughs> take it up so this is what you're gonna have to use in the race and put it on the top of your quad so uh, the race director can come with his wand touch it and program it in for you yes you need one I need one too but at the moment we don't have one so that's exactly why I'm doing this video to show you guys what can you do without the wand? This is your tram. This time the transmitter comes with a beautiful, um, nice antenna pigtail and it's actually glued on. So I know that some people were complaining about the problem with this one coming off, breaking off and so on. This time it's actually really glued on so it's not easy to break off. Also, the wire is a better quality and it has a bulkhead SMA connector on it. We will power it on in a second. Hopefully, I'm gonna find an antenna. Oh, there is an antenna which we can use later on to power it on. There are two sets or three sets of wires. And these wires can be used for one pigtail. You can use that on your own setup. There is a letter code on the tramp telling you exactly what is what I can't really see it through my camera here but you see there is an audio there is a video there is a 5 volt out there is a ground and there is a plus sign as well so on the other side this is the connector for the wand this is the connector where you connect the uh, uh, NFC board NFC stands for near field communication right so the second cable, this one comes for the NFC board, you can plug it in, here you can plug it onto the board and you are all set for going out and racing with this thing. Now just for normal operation, if you are flying in your backyard or something, you don't need this. You can remove this and you can run the trump like it is like that without the NFC board attached. NFC board is required for racing, for programming, for setup. One really important thing about this is that when the NFC board is attached and you want to program it with a wand, then you don't need to power the tramp because the wand through this little board is going to power the tramp as long as it can send the programming in. Hey Joe, thanks buddy. Um, going back further so let's remove that let's plug in there is another cable here which plugs into the AV port and you can supply a battery power to this JST standard JST connector on the other end it has a free position or free pin uh, nice and molex small molex connector which will fit most of the cameras definitely will fit the fetch cameras it will fit uh, the AGS 1177, the AGS uh, 1190, and I believe most of the RAM cam cameras come out with the same configuration. Now, in most cases, some of these things they actually have, uh, or the cameras they have four pins, but you can align this and plug it in in such a way that it can plug it into the four pin connector. You don't need to uh, add anything additional to that. Now, there is doesn't come with a printed manual, so let me just get a little organized here and get these things out of the way. 
and we don't need this at the moment but I printed the manual out from the website and what we need and it's a really important thing of course to read the whole setup here and parameters and stuff like that if you receive your um, tram in race condition and when you power it on you have a fast blinking LED on it and if you touch the button nothing happens there is an emergency unlock procedure there which will actually tell you to push and hold the button for about 30 seconds after you power actually you you push and hold the button you power the tramp on and then um, you hold it for about 30 seconds and that will take it out from the emergency um, unlock or emergency lock what uh, my experience is with that is that you most likely got to hold it down for about 40 seconds till the LED comes on. So at point when you plug it in, when you hold the button down, you plug it in, the LED is going to blink a few times and it's going to go off and you hold it, hold it, hold it for almost like 40 seconds till it comes on. And once it came on, at that point you can let it go, unplug it, plug it back and at that point you have the tramp ready to be programmed like I will have it right now. Hi Bobby. Um, no, you can't order the ones right now. It's not available yet, but hopefully in about two weeks or so. So once you receive the tramp right now in the package, actually this is shipped with a basic uh, setup. So it's on channel one, Fat Shark and 25 milliwatts, right? On the manual, you see a little chart here on how to set this up what to do and how to, what buttons to push in order to get this going, right? So, there we go. It's a really easy interface. You know, with this button setup, this is almost like the Unify Pro. You don't need a one, no nothing. So, anyway, <laughs> just for Unify Pro lovers there. This can work exactly the same way as the Unify Pro with a one button interface, but, so it ships with the channel one fat shark and then 25 milliwatts. In order to get into programming mode, you have to hold down the button for three seconds and then it will blink the LED one times long and then one time short to indicate the channel settings on it. And then if you hold it down again for 10 over three seconds, it has to be actually close more to four seconds. At that point, you're gonna see two long blinks and then again the fat shark or whatever channel uh, uh, band you are on and then if you hold it down again for three and a half seconds four seconds there then it's going to do a three long blinks again which will give you the power output now when you change the power output it can heat up pretty much if you change it to 600 so let's power this thing up right now i'm using the free cell battery to power this on and as you can see the led came in and it flashed a few times and it goes away. And if I can find the button on this, here it is, right? So I'm pushing it and holding it down for about three seconds and it went off. One long blink, one short blink. That indicates we are, that we are in menu one, channel setup, channel one. I wanna go to, uh, let's say channel three. I wait till there is a short blink and then I push the button once. You see now it's blinking twice short. This means that I'm channel two. If I push it again, there, it's on channel three. Now let's say I want to change it from Fat Shark IRC into the race band. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push the button and I'm going to hold it for about three seconds. It goes up one, two. Now you see the two long blinks there for the LED and a short blink indicates that I'm on the fat shark channel. If I want to go on race band, I got to push the button once and I'm going to get two long blinks and two short blinks there. Okay. Now we are moving to the power. We want to set it up to 200 milliwatts. So I push it again and I'll hold it for about three seconds. And then one, two, three long blinks and one short blink indicates that I'm on 25 milliwatts. If I push it once, then I'm gonna get 
two short blinks indicating that I am in 200 milliwatts, right? Now this should be capable of 200 milliwatts, 350 milliwatts and 600 milliwatts as it comes out uh, uh, from the box. Now if you push it and you hold it on again for about four seconds or five seconds, it goes out from programming mode and the LED lit and now it's complete and it goes back into working on channel three, raise band and 200 milliwatts as we said. The temperature is actually not that bad. It's not hot at all touching. So uh, there we go. Let me just see a few questions here. Uh, ben guy, can I upgrade mine to be able to use 600 milliwatts? Yes, Ben, I think that you left, but you just have to push the button. I think it's uh, on the race bands, on the on the race uh, uh, trams which we received in uh, in Collingwood. I believe those are capable of 600 milliwatts, but I can't. Uh, test that. I didn't test that. Actually, I did test that. I have to test that and put it on the computer and then I will say that. Okay. Uh, I see Ben went back to work. And you, um, I'm not expecting you to do this all while mounted in the quad. You can, of course, uh, um, just Velcro this to the quad, take it out and push it back. It's not a big deal. I mean, it just takes you about four minutes to do this. With the wand, when the wand is going to be available, of course, we will be able to uh, program this much quicker. But till then, till then, it's a pretty nice and quick setup, right? So anyway, I hope uh, you guys, you like this. Now I'm again touching it. It's a 200 milliwatts. It barely warms up. And this is just a perfect little device. Now one more good feature about this apparently is that if uh, you have it in the quad on high power and then it's sitting on the sun or so, it will measure the temperature of the board and if it gets too hot, it will actually drop the power output gradually to uh, uh, allow the board to clean down. And as soon as, uh, as, soon as some uh, um, airflow is going on it and it starts to cool down, it will automatically top up again the power back to the original volume. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will try to post this on uh, on uh, uh, YouTube as well. And if you have any questions, hey, there is your one-stop FPV shop, new generation hobbies, and you see the email address there. And you can also call me on that phone number. Enjoy, guys. Have a good day.